Pre-PRISM is a urologic emergency that requires prompt diagnosis and management. Uh, we wanted to review our experience with Pre-PRISM in Vancouver and to evaluate uh, specifically uh, if there's any role of corporeal blood gas uh, measurement in the diagnosis and management of Pre-PRISM and uh, furthermore to identify any factors which determine how Pre-PRISM is managed. We carried out a retrospective chart review on 30 patients who presented with Pre-PRISM to either St. Paul's or VGH since 1990. Uh, we looked at how they were clinically classified in terms of ischemic versus non-ischemic preapism. Uh, we tried to compare uh, or verify this with their corporeal blood gas measurement, and uh, we were interested in their duration uh, per, uh, leading up to their presentation and how they were managed. Uh, 30 patients with a mean age of 44 years uh, were studied. I mean. Uh, the majority of patients presented through the emergency room with a uh, minority uh, presenting on the ward. 34 episodes of preapism were reviewed in all. Uh, the vast majority were ischemic, uh, clinically classified as, as ischemic. Uh, the majority of the ischemic preapisms were found to be secondary to intracavernosal injections, uh, drugs, and a minority secondary to uh, hematologic etiologies, and some were idiopathic. Uh, the three non-ischemic preapisms uh, won't be discussed further in the presentation other than to say that uh, they were either secondary to trauma, uh, two of them were one uh, with the idiopathic, and two uh, required angioembolization with one uh, resolving spontaneously. Looking at the corporeal blood gas measurements, uh, you can see here that um, that uh, the duration of uh, the preapism doesn't uh, quite correlate with how acidotic or how hypoxic their measurements were. In fact, two of the uh, clinically classified ischemic preapisms had uh, blood gas measurements that were not acidotic at all. Um, further, uh, some of the most hypoxic and acidotic uh, measurements uh, were treated successfully medically. The mean duration of preapism in all patients was uh, 19 hours. All were initially managed medically with uh, <coughs> irrigation and, uh, and uh, administration of an alpha agonist intracorporeally. 71% uh, of these patients required no further treatment. And of that group, they had a mean duration of preapism uh, of nine hours before presenting to the hospital. Of the 29 patients that didn't respond to uh, med initial medical therapy, they all went on to surgery, and they had a mean uh, duration of preapism of 48 hours. Oh, God. Uh, this uh, graph depicts uh, the time to presentation of the duration of the preapism as if, uh, and how it relates to uh, uh, whether these patients were managed uh, successfully medically or surgically. And basically, you can see that after 24 hours, the proportion of patients requiring surgery uh, overtakes that of the uh, medically managed group. Comparing the surgically versus medically managed groups, uh, they were fairly similar in patient characteristics. They both had similar uh, ages. Uh, the main differences were uh, the time to presentation uh, being quite a bit lower in those that were successfully managed medically. Also, uh, ICI was a culprit in uh, the majority of patients uh, uh, resolving with medical management as compared to those that required surgery. Of those that were me managed medically, the vast majority only required irrigation and alpha agonist administration. A few uh, resolved with other um, interventions such as stopping a sending agent such as an antipsychotic if that was uh, uh, the cause. Uh, one patient uh, got better with Sudafed. Of the nine patients requiring surgery, all initially had a winter's or corporal glandular shunt. Of those nine, uh, eight required further, more proximal uh, shunting procedure. Only one uh, was successful with a winter shunt, and this patient required two uh, winter's procedures and had a, a quite a low time to presentation, a quite a, a short duration of his preapism before presenting. Of the eight that uh, didn't resolve with a winter shunt, uh, almost all resolved with uh, 
uh, corporal spongiosal or clackles procedure. So in conclusion, uh, the vast majority of priapism that we have seen is ischemic. Uh, the majority of those are due to either uh, ICI or various pharmaceuticals, mainly antipsychotics and uh, illicit drugs in the form of cocaine. Um, corporal blood gas was performed in relatively few patients and uh, even uh, and only um, confirmed ischemia in, in uh, four of the, of the six that it was drawn in and still uh, highly ischemic parameters were managed medically successfully. Uh, the majority of ischemic creepism is managed medically, uh, though these patients uh, that respond to the treatment usually present earlier. Uh, of the proportion that requires surgery, uh, they have a longer time to presentation and the vast majority uh, will require something more proximal than a winter shunt. Thank you.